give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today. Not Smith from 3D Kennels. Happy New Year's to you and your families. And may this be a prosperous new year to all my subscribers. To all my new subscribers, thank you for joining me on my journey. Guys, it's appreciated. I have a small goal of trying to make it to 20 subscribers by the end of January. So, you know, let's try to make that happen, guys. Like, subscribe. Today's video's topic is going to be, is the American bully breed for you? I'm going to discuss this in several categories so you can assess if this breed, if this is a breed that you should get involved in or even be interested in. Now, let me say this, okay? This video is targeted more towards persons interested in the breed, but are somewhat researching if they should or shouldn't invest into this wonderful breed. Now, by no means am I going to be biased and will present you with what I think is an objective, fair opinion as an owner, breeder, and ambassador for this breed. Now, let's get into the category, guys. Indoor or outdoor living accommodation is fine either way. It's really adaptable. The breed, the breed is great either way, small spaces or large spaces. Just make sure to substitute for more exercise if you have a smaller space. Keep that in mind. It is a breed that has a short glossy coat and very minimal shedding, so that's a plus for indoor living. And it's easily housebroken, very intelligent, and um, it really adapts well to indoor as well. And the most important thing that I think that it, it excels in uh, indoor as well as outdoor is it's a very generally quiet breed. Now, of course, you would have some outliers, but generally the American bully is a quiet breed, I must admit. Typically, unless there are some other factors, behavioral issues, it's really quiet breed. So that's a plus. Okay, number two is lifestyle. Now, this breed is usually a more relaxed breed and not as high strung, but there are exceptions. So it depends on where you get your breeder from. So guys, do your research. Check who you are. I would advise to go and see the dog in person, see the parents, see the activity level, and if it's something that you can maintain or keep up with. That's my advice, okay? Now, back to the script. Um, but um, generally, it's a dog that requires minimal exercise and doesn't really suit a much more active lifestyle in general. Again, there can be dogs in this breed that can be extremely active, extremely great, but generally, if you buy 10 bullies, eight of them are more even healed, okay? The breed does have some breathing issues and can easily overheat so depending on where you live matters it doesn't really suffer in the cold climates but it doesn't thrive it tends to do better in warm environments but as i stated earlier it is prone to overheating so exercising should be kept to a minimum in hotter climates i would advise uh exercise anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes at most carry adequate water and lime juice okay guys you can research as to why those two things are important um so active people, be mindful with this breed, okay? Because it can perform very well, it has a high drive, but um, before you know it, you may have an issue on your hands. So, you know, just stick to that guideline that I uh, said earlier, okay? Um, the number three thing that I would wanna touch on is temperament. This is very important, okay? Uh, the temperament, this breed is a sibling dog of the American Pitbull Terrier and the American Staffordshire Terrier both strong and determined breeds. So I don't think it's a good fit for first time owners. I really don't. Um, it's a very powerful breed that needs stern and direct leadership to correct any possible behavioral issues or social issues early on. Now, again, this is general, but um, as again, I've met some really teddy bear American bullies, okay, that are very obedient, intelligent, and just are willing to please in general. But again, if you buy 10 bullies, <laughs> eight or the 10 times, they're gonna be more strong-headed than the latter, okay, guys? Um, I advise if you are a first-time breeder, um, sorry, first-time owner, and you're interested in this breed regardless, get it from a puppy. I would never get a full-grown dog, especially as a full-time owner, because you don't know any behavioral issues or anything of that nature. So get it as a puppy and um, get a obedience class or a personal trainer from early on, I would say get him from anywhere from 10 weeks and up. 
and you know a, a personal trainer if you know any or an obedience class this breed needs to know limits and boundaries very early on because it can tend to have behavioral issues and it can tend to be extremely territorial that's not something you want with a dog that's this powerful okay um there are no specific behavioral issues with this breed not at all um just like you know whatever with any other dog it can be territorial it can have food aggression and it can be very possessive of play toys or um i guess yeah toys uh number four would be healthcare. now honestly guys i would say that this is a more sensitive breed and it's had its fair shares of issues it has a large amount of medical issues that it plagues um, from heat strokes, breathing issues, heart murmur, neurological issues, congenital hiss issues, cleft palate, allergies, and um, so on. It's about a minimum of 10 to 12 things that this breed, you know, suffers from. If you want me to do a video more in depth on that, I will. But um, as it stands, I'm just glossing over this stuff. Um, but the most important thing that the breed suffers from at this point, because it's still in this infancy, is extremely poor confirmation. And most of that contributes to some of the issues that I listed earlier, okay? Um, a minimal amount of things are just specific to the breed, such as the allergies, because it comes from the dog, and that's what was kind of used in the dogs to make the breed. So there's nothing you can really do about that. If you have a dog with allergies, you just have it, okay? Um, um, it's fairly expensive to deal with guys if you have a dog that has medical issues so keep that in mind okay and lastly number five would be maintenance this breed can be fairly cheap to maintain if it's a properly bred dog from good stock just the normal and regular things heart guard flea and tick preventative vitamins proper water intake and you can easily get eight to ten years from this breed but if you get a dog with the issues that I mentioned earlier, then, you know, it's going to be a very expensive dog. To so I advise you, if you're going to have a dog with uh, the medical issues as stated above, you better have deep pockets. Um, well, guys, that's the video for today. Tell me if you think the American Bully is the breed for you. I'm going to keep the content going in 2022. Like, subscribe, and you have a great day.